the cops who are for some reason dressed as as in Thunderbirds are go the series the puppet series from the what 1960s some I grew up on Thunderbirds I grew up ah. on it they do look like Thunderbirds yes absolutely what, what I'm sorry but they look like the most pathetic policemen I've ever seen like, I'm not going to be like oh I'm going to obey myself around then they look intimidating <laughs> Anyway, this lot turned up and they had been issued instructions by the Brussels mayor, one of them anyway, apparently there are a fair few of them, and uh, the Belgian court today struck down the order which shuttered the Conservative Conference, which is called NATCON, short for National Conservatism. And it's he obviously held in Brussels. The police barricaded the conference and uh, authorities demanded that the event be closed, citing that ethically conservative beliefs on abortion, marriage and the EU were reasons for that that would cause alarm and stress and perhaps people will need, I don't know, some kind of, perhaps they need a safe space, lock themselves away and listen to some ASMR soothing music, maybe some light some candles, have a bit of soothing time after hearing Suella Braverman and today from Viktor Orban, the uh, Prime Minister, President? Is he Prime Minister or President? Prime He's Prime one Prime. of the two, the leader of Hungary. And basically, the, Suella Braverman has kicked off about this. Nigel Farage has kicked off about this. The mayor himself started going on about the far right, of course, where they're always smearing those of us who believe in the nation state, fat, the nuclear family, against net zero madness, uh, all of these other things. The list goes on. You're always smeared as being far right by them. And the mayor, apparently, who tried to cancel... Farage yesterday, or the con the whole conference yesterday, not just Farage, hosted ultra-radical Iranian and Russian officials. So whilst this guy waxes lyrical about the far right and the threat of Nigel Farage and Suella Braverman, I'm sorry, but those in glass houses shouldn't throw stones, right? If you are entertaining ultra-radical Iranian officials and Russians, then... Who on earth are you to criticise democratically elected politicians such as Suella Braverman and Viktor Orban? Am I wrong? Yes. I think it is wrong. and I think it's just an attack on democracy. I think yeah. it, the police should have never been called. And you can see Nigel Farage left, actually, when he found out the police had been called because he wanted yes. to avoid any confrontation, which is quite admirable of him. And as we know, that the elite are, off, are out to get Nigel Farage. But I do think it's interesting, though, with Suella Braverman being there. She missed a key vote on the smoking ban. She should have been in Parliament. She shouldn't have been there, in my opinion. She should have been in Parliament voting against a bill by the government. And I do think it's quite interesting. Now, Suella Braverman has long been arguing for hate marches, which some of them have been hate marches in London, to be banned. And this is the problem goes down with the perception. The mayor perceived her presence being of hatred, and he each week tried to cancel marches in uh, London. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? So it kind of, yeah. she was trying to shut down marches in London because she perceived them to be hate marches. Someone perceived her presence to be a hate march and they tried to shut her down. So it's come to buy her, buy her on her bum, if you like. Yes, I think that there is perhaps a, a side debate to be had as to whether Suella Braverman should have been at a conference or voting on the smoking ban. But the real issue here is the fact that terrifyingly, the power of the state was used to try and shut down free speech. That this is particularly unique and absolutely terrifies me because this is not just, say, you know, some comedy event being closed down because you had some lefty protesters outside causing a nuisance and pressurizing the venue to deplatform them. Or we see that all the time. But this is very different because this is someone in a position of power using the power of the state, using the power of the police to stop free speech and it's this idea being pushed everywhere that anyone that believes in quite uh, rational things like basic border control is far right we saw wes streeting yesterday uh, talking in the house of commons uh, saying that so joking saying oh so well over there with her far right fanatics that she's fond of I, I, that absolutely just really upsets me to see people's opinions just disregarded like that with yeah. this label far right and that label is being used not just as an insult but clearly the effect is now that free speech is being shut down because having an opinion, having conservative opinion is seen as dangerous, clearly, to this mayor of Brussels. I'm terrified by this.
Pez, before I let you come in, Penny says, Penny's pulling uh, Chloe up because she says, Suella didn't miss the smoking ban vote. Uh, Ooh, I maybe thought she was, did. was she paired? As in maybe someone voted the maybe. other way. Or, or, anyway, regardless, I sh they were going to lose it because Labour supported it naturally. And, uh, but but our freedom of speech has been under attack in the UK. Look at the Senate. You can't the ban GB news from being played in the Senate. The Welsh Parliament. That's it, another example of state power being used to shut down free speech. It's really happening in this country. We should have dealt with it first when it was happening in the Senate. You know what I mean? It's it absolutely fantastic when GB and... News shone a, shone a projector across the Senate saying, watch GB News after that. I thought that was absolutely But fantastic. even even GB News, Chloe, have said under this, I don't know if you can see it on, on your screen there, but under this photograph of the Thunderbirds, the Brussels Thunderbirds, they say Brussels police shut down a hard right political gathering and take security measures around the venue in Brussels. I personally wouldn't describe Nigel Farage as hard right. I wouldn't describe most of the members of my family as hard right. But they all agree with him. They all watch GB News. I think that's... I don't like that label. Why must we use people who have been on the political extremes for arguing that actually they quite like freedom of speech, they quite like the nation state, they quite like the nuclear family? Are all of these themes really hard right? To me, far right seems the same as hard right language wise. Yeah. It's pretty similar, but you it's had the BBC, you had, exactly, you had that huge backlash against the BBC labeling the Reform Party far right. So they apologize and then they come out and say, call them hard right instead. And I'm like, wait, hang on, that's not really much of, of a change of tune here. You're still basically saying that they are the extreme of the political uh, spectrum, as you put it, which is just completely wrong. And, and I think that. The vast majority of the British public, they want at least some basic border control. Does that not seem rational? Clearly, they've shown that in the, in their votes over the years. They've voted for immigration control for years and years and years and haven't been given it. And now the, that vast majority of the population are being told that they are far right or hard right and some kind of extremist for, for still wanting control of immigration. And so you know, the general public just feel completely unlistened to and ignored consequently. Yeah, because um, it is troubling in the sense of the the order to shut down the the peaceful gathering. You know, this wasn't some Oswald Mosley style march, nineteen thirties march through London, right? This was a lot of in intellectual types or people interested in the nation state and conservative politics setting their bottoms down on seats and listening to politicians and others speak and they argued that actually so the mayor of, of saint jose I, I don't know if it's jose or joss joss maybe saint joss maybe uh district anyway in brussels he cited the reasons that nat Khan's vision is not only ethically conservative example even hostility to the legislation of abortion same-sex unions etc but also focused on the defense of national sovereignty which implies amongst other things a Eurosceptic attitude. Uh, I've got a news flash for you. If you really don't believe that Euroscepticism is on the rise in Europe, then you are sorely mistaken, right? You are in for one hell of a shock come the next set of European elections because Marine Le Pen is on the rise. You've got in Italy, Georgia Maloney, Victor Orban's not showing any signs of abating. Euroscepticism is on the rise thanks to the fact that they have been utterly useless at tackling illegal migration. They have been utterly useless when it comes to net zero policies that have hampered farmers across the continent. They've been utterly useless on basically democracy and accountability as well and free speech issues. There are so many of them throughout the continent. They are in for a rude awakening if they think that Euroscepticism is limited to a conference of what, a few hundred people at most? I mean, Kez, yeah, I, I, what I, I, planet I, I, are they on, living Kez. on? Planet Cuckoo Land. What did Tony Blair say? The natural habitat of the Liberal Dem Democrats is Cuckoo Land. That's where they belong, Cuckoo Land. And Nigel Farage is not far right. I mean, far right in, in this country was Nick Griffins. And people don't realise Nick Griffins hates. Hey, Nigel Farage with a passion. You I mean, see, apparently, he's been tweeting the abuse for some reason. I just noticed this the other day. But yes, you know, this, continue, this, continue. This country did have a far right, and what Nigel Farage did was phenomenal. You know, two thirds with them and changed their view, and a third of them stayed and went to university with Jada Franson and Paul Golding. But actually, Nigel Farage has done more to fight far right 
fascism in this country than anybody else. I mean, if you were a member of any prescribed group, a member of uh, the British Nationalist Party, you could not be a member of UKIP. So Nigel Farage has done more to tackle far-right extremism in this country than any mortal man alive. Uh, before you to come in, but before you do, Tom Ash says on YouTube, everyone is far right unless you're a vegan bike rider in bamboo clothes. Uh, I don't own bamboo clothes, Tom, you'll be pleased to know. Jane says, not far right, just right. Yes, Jane, uh, it's a very good line. I agree. Chloe, I'm obviously left the European Union, but as far as, you know, the, the European court and things like that are concerned, this activism seems to be more prevalent and we are still tied up in a lot of, well, attachments as far as legal infrastructure and uh, even on regulatory matters too with a lot of the European Union. And frankly, I think this has been the best article or best advert for Euroscepticism and Brexit that I've ever seen. Absolutely. So as was clearly seen in the, the details of order that you showed us there, the reasons that they gave, where they've said, they basically said Euroscepticism is dangerous and shouldn't be allowed to be spoken and needs to be shut down. That is absolutely terrifying that they're suggesting it's dangerous to allow someone who disagrees with your agenda to uh, speak. It's absolutely mm. bonkers. And I think Nigel actually came out of this crazy situation. Did he? In a, he, he uh, came out in pretty high spirits is what I was saying. Um, <laughs> He came out with pretty high spirits. And, and he was saying, you know, exactly, this has shown me more than anything else that we did the right thing by leaving. And it's going to show to the other nations in Europe just how bonkers this EU project is, which just keeps growing and growing in power, more and more centralised power, not very democratic at all. And so this, I hope, strengthens our side of the argument and shows them to be absolute fools. They've really shown themselves to be who they really are. So I don't think that this is a win for the EU in any way. Um, mayor of Brussels, I think that they've made absolute fools of themselves and the world is clearly seeing it. So hopefully what has actually happened is in some sense quite a good thing. And I want to change to Labour's response because Labour's response genuinely terrified me because they st where Streeting, who's the Shadow Health Secretary, stood up in the House of Commons and he basically said he, he in fact that this was going on. He mocked the fact that free assembly, free speech was being shut down in a supposedly liberal economy that respects such things, a democracy of all of, of, in name only, the heart of European democracy actually allowed this shutdown to go ahead. And here's what Wes Streeting had to say. It really, it re reminded me of why I'm so fearful of the next five years and what's going to happen over those five years. Whom she has much in common, Mr Speaker. <laughs> Boris Johnson has said this proposal is absolutely nuts. It's just <laughs> mad. Well, now he knows how the rest of us felt when he was Prime Minister, Mr <laughs> Deputy Speaker. And, of course, a source close to the right honourable member for Fareham, who couldn't be here today with us, Mr Deputy Speaker, because she's currently in Brussels, surrounded by uh, the trying to shut down the event she's attending with some far-right fanatics um, with whom she has much in common. Um, she said that she is not a fan of the bill. Well, now she knows how the rest of us feel about the right honourable member for Fareham too. I mean, far right sme smear is evident. And Emma Webb, a very good friend, she said, we are facing at least five years of a government who clearly thoroughly enjoy the police shutting down the speech of their political opponents. I'm sorry, but a Labour government simply cannot be trusted. Am I being totally hyperbolic here? Are you as worried as I am, Chloe, that actually this spells goodness only knows what clampdowns on free, freedom of expression and freedom of assembly are going to happen under this party? I, I hope that if they try and put in some kind of draconian rubbish like the hate crime bill that we've seen in Scotland, but you've seen the backlash against that, I would like to think that the backlash against it here would be as great, if not greater. Now, the flip side of that coin is that Labour are probably going to end up with a pretty big majority, which means that they won't face that much opposition uh, passing 
bills through Parliament, they can get away with having quite a big rebellion in their own party uh, if they get the number of seats that the polls suggest, which would mean that if Keir Starmer wants to go ahead with some kind of draconian anti-free speech measures, he potentially could. Um, But I don't think it would do much good for their polls in terms of the next election five years after that or however long it ends up See, being. See, I mean, I'm not too optimistic. I, I think that Labour will come after outlets like, dare I say, GB News. Uh, and uh, I'm touch... Have I got any wood in here? Touch wood because, you know, I have mortgage to feed and lights to keep on. And... Um, <laughs> I th- actually there will be a clampdown on on these areas and in the name of disinformation, in the name of clamping down on the far right, in the name of, of silence and dissenting voices, I'm not too optimistic about Britain's freedom to speak and freedom to challenge under this party. Well, you're right to be pessimistic. You should be fearful and you should, you know, what's going to happen. I mean, we've already mentioned it before, but, you know, the Senate is controlled by the Labour Party. Look what they've done in Wales. And what did Keir Starmer say? Wales is a blueprint for what we can do in government. He sees Labour as a, as a model of what he's going to do to the rest of the United Kingdom. And West Streeting is a narcissistic man. I mean, he doesn't like who's got a different opinion than him. One minute he's, you know, in the Palestinian protesters. Then when they come after him, he goes after them and doesn't want to listen to them. Same with the eco-extremists. He's, he's, you know, he's, the minute they come to his house, he uh, doesn't want to listen to their uh, opinions anymore. So he's just a narcissistic man. Unless you're agreeing with him, he will not listen to you.